So I'm ready to paint now with my interactive acrylics. We've got cadmium yellow deep, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, tinting white and some burnt umber. So the first thing I want to do is create an environment that these animals are occupying. And while I'm not going to try to mimic the exact landscape, I want to create something of that same atmosphere. So to begin with, we've got this, um, you know, wonderful sort of bright morning sky. So I'm going to begin to put in a mix of nearly all tinting white with a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And let me just, uh, let's put a little bit of water onto the paper with the spray bottle. And I've, I've got this, I don't know, don't know what it is, one inch, one and a half inch, maybe two inch decorator's brush. And I'm just going to begin to put a bit of that pale blue down onto the top of the paper here. And to be honest, that color is way too dark. So I'm going to grab a bit more white and we'll mix that in to lighten things up a little bit. So let's see if we can lighten up the sky somewhat. So that's starting to work, but let's get a bit more white in there. So I'm just laying on pure tinting white at the moment. And that's not too bad. Next, I want to begin to suggest some of the distant tree lined hills. So I'm dipping back into that darker blue that I started off with. I'm going to add just the merest touch of um, the burnt umber and just the merest touch of the crimson I've got there, the alizarin, and a bit more of the blue. Yeah, not very much at all, really. Um, we'll see how this looks when I put it onto the painting. I'm going to keep the surface of the paper fairly moist. I want some soft edges between the bank of colour I'm about to put down and the sky. Uh, that's not too bad. That's starting to work okay. So notice how I'm moving the brush sort of against the bristles to create um, some nice texture and a sort of feathered, soft feathered edge. And then we'll, we'll continue that down a little bit lower over here on the right and you know, perhaps even come up to come up to the edge of this main animal here, the larger animal over on the left. For the next bank of trees that's a little bit closer to us, we want to take a bit more of the blue and mix that into what is left over of the colour I've just used. Take a little bit more of the burnt umber and again we'll see what that looks like when we put it down onto the painting. So again I'm going to keep the paint nice and moist so that with these interactives that allows you to continue to blend and we'll see what that looks like. And again that seems to be okay. So just suggesting the outline of some trees here, which are in front of that most distant bank. And then as we go over to the left hand side, let's add a little bit more blue, not too much, just a touch, just so that we're varying the colour that we're putting down. So if you look at a landscape, you know, it's not going to be one uniform colour from right to left. And 
OK, so now we've got our second bank of trees. Just realised that I can actually just f I need to fill that little bit in there a bit and we'll come up a little more tidily to the edge of the animal. Now, I could do a third bank of trees, but I think, to be honest, I think that's probably going to be enough for the very distant 